Hello, my friends, and welcome to your Michigan Compass. Today, we're back at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. They still have the tree up because today is December 30th, though this video probably won't come out until mid-January. This is part three of our tour of the Henry Ford Museum. It's the final part, and today we're gonna to take a look at the cars and the trains. Come join us. And as we enter the cars area, you can see this particular spot has a title. It's Driving America, the impact of cars on our lives. And cars have had a major effect on our lives, obviously. And they've got some unique stuff here, starting right here. An early model self-driving car from 2016. You'll notice that this car has cameras all over it. And they're 360 cameras, so they can record everything around the car. This is also a Chevy Bolt electric vehicle. And on top, more cameras up here. Not quite sure what's going on down here by the wheels. And another camera right there on the back. And right next to that self-driving vehicle is a 1959 Cadillac Eldorado convertible. And this is a thing of beauty. Just take a look at the curves on this beautiful car. And it's probably hard to tell from this video, but this car is very long. Very long indeed. I don't know the exact length, but I would say this is probably as long as an extended bed four-person pickup truck. Look at the back end of that. Let's take a look at the interior. Just amazing. And this vehicle right here with the flags on it is the presidential motorcade vehicle that drove President Ronald Reagan when he was in office. It's a 1972 Lincoln. There's a lot of things that are interesting about this because while it looks like a Lincoln, it's very, very different. You can't really tell from the video. These windows are very thick. They're two inch thick glass, I believe. And on the back, the trunk has this bar and the bumper has this little grid. This is where the Secret Service would stand and hang on and ride along with the vehicle. Looking at some of these special features, full armor plating, bullet resistant glass handrail on the back that we saw. And it says the rear bumper folds down. Well, we saw that as well. And the tires have a run flat design that can keep going even if somebody tries to puncture them. Other special features include a two-way communication system, sunroof panel for people to stand up, as you see in the photo. PA system, so the president can be heard without leaving the car. And fluorescent lights inside to allow occupants to be seen through the windows. Pretty interesting. The cost of this, by the way, was half a million dollars. And if you enjoy seeing these presidential cars, this one is by far the most iconic in history. This is the Kennedy car, a 1961 Lincoln. And this is the car that Kennedy was assassinated in. This one a little bit different on the bumper. You'll notice that the plates to stand on are actually built into the bumper. It's on a flip down. And the hand rails to hang on to are there. And the spare tire sticking out the back. One other thing to note is that you probably have already seen that there is a top on this vehicle. And the one in which Kennedy was assassinated did not have a top. The top is removable on this vehicle. It's a hard top removable. 
And speaking of presidential cars, here's Eisenhower's car from 1950. It's a Lincoln. Look at that glass bubble top. And this one right here is a 1939 Lincoln. This was Roosevelt's car. Franklin Delano Roosevelt FDR. Rode in this one. These are the actual cars, by the way. This is not a replica. This is the actual car that was used. Almost everything you'll find here at the Henry Ford Museum is the actual version and not a replica. And this looks to be the oldest of the bunch. Right here, Teddy Roosevelt's Broham from 1902. That's amazing. And this was a carriage, horse-drawn. No engine on this baby. And just around the corner from those presidential vehicles is the old-fashioned McDonald's hamburger sign with the old classic cars right out in front. We have the 1956 Chevy Bel Air, and that teal blue convertible. And then right next to that is a 1951 Studebaker Champion Starlight Coupe. And then, of course, the sign for Lammy's Diner, which is right back there, and I believe it's closed already for the day. Unfortunately, I have not been able to dine in there of all the times I have been here. And most of that is due to the pandemic, unfortunately. Right around the other side, we've got some old coaches. Look at this thing, just, just absolutely beautiful the way it's decorated with all those colors. This is an Abbott Downing Concord coach from 1891. And this would have been pulled by horses. And just to give you an idea, down here on the sign, they have a few photos you can see. Another form of transportation that kind of went by the wayside to an extent after cars came out was bikes. People still use bikes, but now it's for pleasure and for exercise. And not so much to get places unless they live in a small urban city where they don't have to go very far. Right next to that, we have Hunter's Point and Erie Basin Crosstown Line, and this is a horse-drawn streetcar from 1875. Notice that down here the wheels actually ride on rails, and this would have been pulled by horses, kind of like a horse-drawn trolley. And check this out, one of the first cars, so to speak. It's a steam-powered car. It's an 1865 Roper steam carriage. Imagine having you put coal in there and fire it up and wait for it to get warm enough and heat the boilers just so you could go somewhere. Right next to that, an 1896 Ford quadricycle runabout. And that's one thing that people don't realize. I like what they put underneath there. Henry Ford invented this car, not the car. I don't know if this was his first, but it was one of the cars he created. What he's known for is revolutionizing how cars were built and creating the assembly line. Right over here, we have a 1901 Columbia Victoria. And here's how I know that. It's on the sign here. And there's an 1896 Duria, Duria. And I believe that that is the vehicle in the background right there. Next we have an 1899 Locomobile Runabout, and that is sitting right up there in that festive red and green color. Then over here a 1903 Oldsmobile Runabout, 
And that is this one right there. This larger white vehicle up here is a 1906 Thomas Flyer touring car. And as you can tell, this definitely seats more than two. And it looks like it does so with a little bit of comfort. Just below that is a 1903 Holzman runabout. And this one looks a little bit smaller, even though the tires are really big. Look at those wooden look at those wooden spoked tires right up there is a 1906 Ford Model N and then right in front of that we have a 1909 Ford Model T touring car not quite as fancy as that white one we just saw a few minutes ago, but it does have a top. And back up behind that is a 1924 Chrysler Touring Car. Not only does this one look big, but it's covered, and it looks like it's a little bit roomier than the Ford we just saw. Right over here, a 1924 Essex Coach sedan. This one's completely enclosed. If it was winter time, I think this would be my vehicle of choice so far. This one's got windows on it. It'd be a little bit warmer. And coming up next, we have a 1932 Ford V8 engine. And here it is right here. Look at that V8. And it's quite a bit different from today's engines, isn't it? The vehicle in the background is a 1937 LaSalle Coupe. And it looks like this one is one of the first vehicles I've seen that's completely enclosed with the windows and they probably roll down or at least crack open to allow air to pass through on those hotter days. You'll notice there's also hubcaps on this vehicle and some vents on the hood. Quite a bit more modern. Right in front of it, we have a 1943 Willys Overland Jeep. That was the Army Jeep right there. And there's a whole section right in front of this about war driving and how driving changes things for the war. And you're able to transport things and move things around. Quite interesting. Getting a bit closer to the 50s, this is a 1949 Ford sedan. I want to show you the front of this vehicle. Look at those curves and all that chrome. Really cool looking vehicle. Quite a bit different from the other vehicles we've seen so far. Quite a bit more modern. And that vehicle behind it, I think everybody knows what that is, but that is a 1949 Volkswagen sedan, also known as a Beetle. And here's the view from the other side. You can see that beetle a little bit better now. It's not being hidden. Classic car. Over along this wall, they have all the emblems from all the different car manufacturers. And those emblems are all iconic today. Right next to it, there's different brand names for different vehicles that have come about over the years as well. You see that name at the top, Tundra. The one to the left, Explorer, we know that the Tundra is a Toyota and the Explorer is a Ford. This billboard placed inside for decoration is the only mention of Packard. And if you've seen the movie Packard, you know what this is about. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It was a great movie. Unfortunately, the big automotive companies 
put them out of business, but they had some great ideas. And those big automotive companies gobbled up their ideas and stole everything, unfortunately. It was, it was a very well thought out car with lots of unique ideas. And it would have been interesting to see what would have been if they had made it. And right down here, one of the most classic cars ever produced, the 1965 Ford Mustang. This is an iconic car indeed. And oddly enough, right next to that Mustang is a 1986 Ford Taurus. Not exactly the most classic car, but it was a reliable car and it was something that everybody wanted and that's why they sold so many. All right, continuing our trek of older cars, this one's a 1955 Chevrolet hardtop. Another classic car. Look at the lines on that, the curves, the chrome, and right in front of it, a 1960 Chevrolet Corvair sedan. And this little blue car in the background here that's maybe not so curvy and not so pretty is a
a Ford Model B touring car. And then right here we have a Ford Model A runabout. This is a uh, one person or two person vehicle just for getting around town. And over here we have a 2010 Edison 2. And while the name Edison might lead you to believe this is an electric vehicle, it is not. It's a very specific vehicle that was designed with aerodynamics and a specific one cylinder turbocharged motorcycle engine. And it was able to move four people 100 miles on just one gallon of gas. And there's also some new cars in here. This one is a 2018 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. So there are new cars in here as well as the old cars. Look at the front of this vehicle. That just screams sports car. Now this is a sweet little sports car. This is a 1962 Mustang One Roadster. And just look at the way it curves. Look at the hood, the headlights that pop up. Look at that windshield and the wing. That is a cool looking car. Another thing you'll be able to see here are some Indy cars. This is a 2019 Dallara Chevrolet IR12. Over here we have another car. This one is a Dallara IR12 and it says Honda, so maybe a Honda engine. Pretty amazing. Back over this way they have some drag racing cars as well. Check this guy out right here. This is a 1933 Willys Gasser. they have some information on drag racing over here another drag racer this one's just the frame and the engine and over here they have one of the cars Over here a NASCAR and it looks like this was a winner because I see all that confetti on the top. This is a 2011 Ford Fusion driven by the youngest winner at the time, Trevor Bain. And this car is in the exact condition when it won. You notice all that confetti all over the top of the vehicle. And this area right here called in the driver's seat is a area where you can go in and run a race car simulation. This does cost money and we're not going to do that. It's uh, $6.75 for members and $8 for non-members. Over here a couple more cars, NASCARs, and these are just half of a car actually or possibly just the outside shell of the car. But it's all decorated to make you feel like you're at the NASCAR raceway at the Daytona 500 actually, watching a race in the pit. Over here are some of the various things they use like this gas tank to fill the vehicles as they're racing, they stop in the pit. And they only put so much gas in there, they don't want the extra weight, so they just put enough in there to get so far around and then they let them go and then when they get low on gas they know very precisely how many laps they can make when they need to fuel up again or if they need to fuel up at all same thing goes with the tires and here's some of the uh, pit uniforms that they would wear when working on these vehicles over here another vehicle this is a 2001 chevrolet corvette c5-r 
look at this one. This is a beauty. Pretty cool. Right here they have an example of one of the seats from these race cars. And it kind of looks like a child's car seat. And it's padded all over, it comes up to their head. So if they do crash, they are protected from all angles. And right around the corner, they have a cutaway of one of these vehicles. And I came around to this side, hopefully I can get a good view through one of these holes because the other side is covered in plexiglass. So let's see if we can't take a look inside. And there you go. That is what the inside of this vehicle looks like. And over here, take a look at this car. This is a 1956 Chrysler 300B. Just look at that. Can you imagine racing something that old and outdated and big? I'm sure it was fun, but probably not as safe as today's standards. Just take a look at the remains of this car. It's a 1972 McLaren. That is all that remains of this vehicle after a bad accident while racing. And right over here, 1984, March 84 C. Cosworth. Right here, a 1935 Miller Ford racing car. Check this out right here. This is a 19... 58 more Unser and I'm not sure what kind of a race this would have been in but you can obviously see they're dirt roads so I don't know if this was off-road racing well after reading the sign it says that it is the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb and this car won 13 times or no this car won nine times in 13 years pretty impressive Here's a little bit about that particular race. It's an all uphill race apparently, going up to Pikes Peak in Colorado. I have been back in this area once before and over in here are some of my favorite cars of all times. This is, uh, this is gonna be a treat. This is the Ford GT probably the coolest car, in my opinion, that Ford has ever built. And this is a race car version right here. Just an amazing vehicle. The engine is in the back. And uh, the front here, you can actually see that is all cooling system down there. Look at the curves on this thing. This just screams sports car, amazing sports car. Now let's take a look at a version that is not a race vehicle. Now these were manufactured and sold. This is a 2016 and they have split the car in half and they joined it together with a race car version so you can see the differences. Let's take a look from the front. It still has that cooling area in the front but you'll notice that the front fairing is a little bit different. The headlights are definitely different. The logo, of course, is different. And that looks to be about it until we get to the very back of the vehicle. And if you look in the back of the vehicle, that spoiler on the back there is permanently mounted on the racing side, but on the consumer vehicle, that actually has a motor that will fold it down. Obviously different tires, different braking system on the consumer side. Taking a look, we can't really see too much inside the vehicle because it's very dark, it's all black. And it looks like it's actually set up for racing. Looking down underneath the spoiler, you can see the uh, actuators that move that up and down. And then the exhaust on the back side. I'm not 100% positive, but I believe these vehicles sold somewhere between $250,000 to $300,000. Very similar to buying maybe a Lamborghini or something like that. Over here, 
a classic Ford pickup truck. This is a 1956 Ford F100. Just take a look at that. The whole back end is more like a box and less curvy. The only curves you see are the fenders over those tires. Quite a bit different from today's trucks. Right behind that pickup truck, we have a 1935 Stagecoach travel trailer. And look at this thing. There's just that one tiny little window in the back. It's very dark. It looks like there are some windows on the other side. This side has no windows to speak of, and it is very dark inside there. Take a look at the top. It actually has like little chimney stack for the heat vent and possibly for the kitchen or the bathroom. Very boxy looking. There is a window in the back and it looks like there's even like an escape hatch or storage area underneath that window. Well, this is interesting. Back over here, a 1900 wood electric truck. That is pretty wild that they had an electric truck back in 1900. Very boxy looking. Kind of looks like one of those carriages we were looking at earlier, except it's attached to a giant box on wheels. Just take a look at this thing. It's very boxy. Very interesting the way it's decorated and the way it looks. There's a driver's side door there. A couple of compartments to get into the engine. A 1975 FMC motorhome. course over on this side about halfway down about halfway down you have your main entrance there to get in and out of your camper and right here we have a 1946 semi truck trailer it has a little bit different of a look than today's semi truck trailers if you notice the front end is kind of rounded and it's a little decorative there at the top with those wings. Kind of cool looking the way it's all rounded and curvy and probably a little more aerodynamic too. And then it is attached to a 1952 Federal 45M truck tractor. Next to that, we have a 1975 Warrior concept car. It says rugged and reliable. Says McKinley Thompson designed this car for basic but dependable transportation in developing nations. He built this prototype using the chassis and rear engine from a Renault 10 sedan. Interesting looking car. Very interesting looking. Looks like something I'd, I would expect to see on the outback in Australia or something, something like that. Got the manual horn. A little uh, roll bar there in the middle and there's no doors right next to that a 1933 Scripps booth rocket this is a cycle car prototype what's interesting here is the people ride in line on this vehicle you've got the passenger actually riding in front of the driver which is uh, I guess this, this is perfect vehicle for backseat drivers, right? Over here, a 1983 Honda Accord LX, another vehicle that sold very well here. And then next to it, we have a 1908 Stevens Duria Model U Limousine. And look at this vehicle. You'll notice on this vehicle that the area around the front windshield is actually wood and the back kind of looks like one of the horse-drawn carriages except it's a motorized vehicle it's got an engine in the front so kind of unique looking vehicle a 
And over here, an 1899 Duria Trap. It's an early auto. And over here, a 1927 Bluebird School Bus. Believe it or not, this is a school bus. Imagine sending your kids to school on this. And in 1906, this would have been your public transportation on this rapid bus. There's no way a trip to the Henry Ford Museum would be complete without seeing some trains. And here they have some beauties. Just take a look at this piece right here. I can't even begin to tell you how enormous this is. I'm standing about 20 feet away and I can't even get the whole thing in frame. It is gigantic. It's probably close to 16 feet tall, I would imagine, at least. And then take a look at this locomotive up here, number 154. It's hard to get far away because they have these trains very close together. So I'll do my best to get as much of these as I can in the video. But just look at this. I want to give you guys an idea of how big this is. You can see the uh, train wheels here. Okay guys, well I am standing next to the train wheel. Just take a look at how tall this thing is. This is one of the wheels on this locomotive. It's, a, it's amazingly big. And number 156 is actually a 1909 Baldwin Drag Consolidation. And here is the front of it. Let's see if I can back up far enough so you guys can see this. And this passenger car right here, the Detroit and Mackinac Baggage and Express. It looks like there was seating. Let's see if we can get a view inside. I don't know. I can barely reach up high enough to get this. But it does look like there are seats up inside there. And I do see some old Edison bulbs, so it's it's somewhat lit inside there. And the front portion contains the baggage. Right up here. Over here we have a caboose from 1925. This is where some of the people that worked on the train would sleep and actually live as they crossed the country. Right here, this is a 1923 Canadian snowplow engine. And this is how they would travel through the snow and plow the snow off the tracks so the train could get through. Just take a look how it scoops all the way down to just a few inches above those tracks. Right here we have another passenger car. Can't go inside, but there is a staircase I was able to climb up and you can see inside a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that and see the seats inside there. Right over here, an old cable car. Just look at that. Just amazing. And if you look up towards the top, you can see the rod that would reach out for the cable and get power to run this thing up and down the streets. Just take a look at this one right here. This is a beauty. Atlantic and Gulf Railroad. Got some real wood up there. This was a steam locomotive. It was powered by wood. It says Sam Hill on it. And look at the brass decorations. This thing is a beauty. Just take a look at those wheels and how long this thing is. It is gigantic.
just take a look at how big this train is. If I had to guess, I'd say this is 25 feet high. I have no idea how wide, maybe 15 feet wide, 16 feet wide, and very, very long. Longer than a semi truck for sure. And now look at the front of that train, 1601. Look at how big this thing is. It is gigantic. This is not something you'd ever want to be in front of when it's going full steam ahead. And take a look at these. They look like stagecoaches, but this is actually a train. This is how passengers first traveled when they were on the railway. Over here, a couple more classics. 1937 DeSoto Firelight. And take a look at that Chevy. It's a beaut. Also over here, classic Holiday Inn sign. And they have an example of what the Holiday Inn used to look like. And some of the old things that were inside that you could find pens and soaps and different things like that. Just take a look inside the old Holiday Inn. Once cars became popular, people liked to travel and they'd have cottages, they'd go and stay in hotels even go camping. 1959 Volkswagen Westphalia. Look at that thing. And over here, a 1949 Airstream. Classic camper right there. Still made today and still very expensive. And then right here, look at this pop-up camper. Is that cool or what? This is Camp Wahoo. And uh, down here, it's a little info on this particular one. It says it's a Gilkey tent trailer from about 1927. Over here, take a good look at this classic Checker cab. This is a 1981 Checker Marathon taxi cab. Right next to it. We have an old Texaco, looks like a uh, gasoline hauler. It says, let's see, it's a tanker. 1939 Dodge Airflow tank truck. And this is how they used to haul the fuel to the gas stations. And speaking of gas stations, they've got this set up like a Texaco gas station from back in the day. Take a look at those old classic pumps. Another thing that had to progress over time, not just the gas pumps, but also traffic lights, because there had to be some way to control traffic to ensure safety. Speaking of safety, take a look at some of these old car seats for children. Over here, a 1957 Cornell Liberty safety car. It has a very unique door. It folds out. I've never seen anything. It's not quite a suicide door. It, it's very different. <laughs> it's a hinged bifold door. Well guys, that's gonna do it for our part three of the Henry Ford Museum. I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to click on that compass so you can stay subscribed to future episodes just like this. And remember, adventure is only a short drive away.